I'm going to call the regular select board meeting to order. It's Thursday, February 17th at about 6.33 p.m. And we were delayed because of our, um, in our start, because of our informational meeting for town meeting. Um, so first item is to set a just agenda. Does anybody have any changes? Any of the select board have anything to change on the agenda? I believe we are removing the executive session. Is that correct? Okay. Anything else? Could I have a motion to amend the agenda to remove the executive session? So moved. Thank you. Second. All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Wait a minute. Kaylee and Wiz, I didn't get you. You got an eye from Kaylee, Wiz? Wiz is frozen. And Wiz is frozen. So that's four eyes. And any nay, we don't know about Wiz because she's frozen. So that's where the eyes have it. And we're going to adjust the agenda. Communication from the audience. Does anybody here to talk about anything that's not on the agenda? I don't think so, looking at the crowd, but. All right, moving along, uh, select board to approve minutes from last time, which was the regular. Aye. That's I. Uh oh. Wiz, I think your connection's a little flaky. Um, the My connection is a little flaky, and I am going to go off video so that the, it, that doesn't take up the bandwidth. But I, right. voted, I voted I on the previous question. Okay, great on the agenda, changing it. Thank you. Um, uh, so we need to approve minutes from the last regular select board meeting, which was February 3rd. Um, could we have a motion to that effect? I'd like to move that we approve the February 3rd minutes as written. Second. Any discussion? I thought they were good. Yeah, I just wanna say thanks to Amanda for doing such a great job. All right. All in favor of approving the minutes as written, please say aye. 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 I didn't get Michael. Still didn't get Michael. I don't know, I'm not hearing you. He just unmuted. I know he unmuted, but I still can't hear him. Hi, sorry, it ah. seems to be freezing. Okay, maybe, it, hmm, hope it's not us. Um, all right, so that's everybody. Motion carries and um, regular meeting minutes are approved. Next is town manager report given by David Upson. All right, um, all Rich and Elliot provided an update on the wastewater plant project and the funding surrounding it. Um, depending on how the bids come in, there's some flexibility in getting Lagoon One sludge cleaned out and disposed of with state funding. The state pollution control grant for an extra 220,000 was not originally anticipated. So the town has the option of increasing the clean water loan amount above the 1.1 million to 10% over the bond amount um, to cover some of these costs without impacting the bond. Um, we will still need to utilize other funds to address the sludge clean out. Um, those are our potential ARPA funds and then the um, capital, capital Expense the capital, capital fund capital for the fund sewer from the sewer, um, which which has something on the order of half a million in it. Five in two thousand nineteen, I had five hundred thirty thousand um, sewer capital projects fund. So we're slowly trying to figure out um, the final dollars to be able to get this project done. Um, it doesn't look good for both lagoons to be cleaned out, but um, things can change. They're removing the lagoon clean out from the contract. So we'll have to have an additional contract for that. Um, still a work in progress. Um, and then if the bids come in way over again, we're gonna be in the same predicament that we were in. Um, so that's what's going on there. Uh, the, and then moving on the minimum, Moving on to fireworks and uh, Memorial Day events. Uh, the minimum fireworks show went up to $5,000. Ouch. Um, we budgeted for three. 
Um, so we will need to kick off a fundraising campaign if we want a Memorial Day show. Um, supply chain and inflation are all part of the increases. So what do you guys, what do you guys want to do about that? Um, I'm, I'm not. Ask for some money. Ask for sure. some, some. If people want to donate, then, then we can. Yeah. I, guess I just want to chime in here for a minute. Um, so the last two years, we haven't asked for donations because of COVID. Previously, we would, you know, seek donations from community businesses and residents. Um, we would put in the three and we typically would get anywhere between a thousand and the most we ever got was 1700. So in order to get to the minimum show, we would really need to get $2,000 from the community um, to pitch in to reach that minimum show. So that's... Yep. Thank you, Casey. Is there a deadline for um, telling them that we want it? Well, they wanted to know now to put us on the schedule. Um, and if we decide to do that, I would be sending out the donation letters right away. Um, you know, I have 50, 60 letters that I send out um, to area businesses and people that have given in the past. And then um, we just have to wait for those to come in and see what happens. Um, but yeah. I, mean, I think we should really go ahead and do it. That if, if we're going to have Spring Festival, I think this is a nice way to end it. And yeah. I suspect that we can raise the money that we're going to need for fireworks. Okay. I agree. Right. I wonder I if we can do, do some sort of play off of like, it's been two years. We're looking for 2000. I, my letter, <laughs> I did actually work on that letter today a little bit, and I sort of do have a um a little play on that my first paragraph so yeah i could kind of talk about that let's, let's end the pandemic with a bang Ooh, <laughs> yeah. here we go yeah all right thank you um northeast kingdom broadband is hosting a town hall style meeting to update town officials on their build out strategy and to answer questions regarding arpa fund funding um the town hall meeting will include officials from albany craftsbury greensboro and wolcott um i think someone from the board should attend the meeting will be held virtually on Thursday, February 24th from 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. So it's a week from tonight? Yeah. In the, oh, no, in the middle of the day. Okay. Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. And it's uh, basically NEK Broadband and the, um, the CUD will be, you'll be able to ask them questions. Yep. Uh, they're, they're probably their executive board will be there. I'll try to join. Okay. It's dependent. It's, I'm a little bit weather dependent this time of year, but I'll, okay. we'll see. I'll try um, to, I have a meeting until 1230, but I can try as well. Okay. Um, I, I have a feeling it's going to be similar to what was given to us at the last meeting, but um, it, it'd be good to be yeah. represented there. Yeah. Um, Albany, Craftsbury, Greensboro, and Wolf, it'll be there too. I think I just said that. Um, and then a little public service piece or a public announcement. Um, we are looking for members of the public to join the rec committee. We're down to one member and the rec coordinator. Wow. So, um, you know, a great time to put your interest, your interest in for that would be before the next select board meeting. Yeah. And so, which is the organizational meeting. Spring festivals coming up. Yeah. And there's just, a lot of good things going on in town and if you want to get involved and be a part of the good things come see me and um we'll get you on the rec committee um people have questions in the, yeah i'll just throw out that i talked uh earlier with opie and asked about, about the um aldrich and elliott's proposal for going back out to bid for the sewer and um, I just suggested that maybe we could ask them if there's any way to um, basically, even though we're going to have to separate out the sludge removal, if there's a way to still include that in the overall project and they're thereby increase our subsidy through the, the, water, the state water revolving fund or whatever it is. Um, so it, which might necessitate a new bond vote, but it might be worth it if there was a big subsidy. Yeah, that sounds like a fantastic idea. I don't know if it'll fly, but it's worth asking the question. Right. 
Um, and then I just want to make one last announcement. The Borac people reached out to me uh, at the end of the day today, um, just stating that they're still working on their decision. So. And for those who don't know or remember, Vorek is the state program that we've applied to for funding um, to partly pay for replacing the swinging bridge and a park around that and connectivity to the rail trail. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, next up is Road Foreman Report. Do you have that? Do you know if, what the status is of all our equipment and that kind of thing? Uh, brake job today on the one ton, and there's salting and sanding. Um, the road, the back roads are were a little icy and pretty bare though. Mm -hmm. um, they're down to dirt, but uh, you know they're working away. I think they're doing a good job. They got all the snow removal done on the last storm uh, in the village. Um, there was some tight spaces, but haven't really had too many big breakdowns. So that's always good. Yeah. I wanted to say after the last storm, I thought the town, the crew did a great job. It looked to me like roads were good and the um, downtown area got cleaned up quickly, I thought. Yeah, I just wanted to add the sidewalks. We've been like super on top of the sidewalks this year. I think that's really appreciated. Um, and then also this is a combination of road crew and cherry belief but the new signs downtown look really good the welcome to hardwick signs like add a lot great all right next is the hardwick police department report and i think we have mike yep that's him in the corner right yeah somewhere in here <laughs> um <clears throat> so we we completed the uh, state auditor's report uh all that's been turned in i think we're good on that uh, we've conditionally hired uh, two applicants for law enforcement officers. Uh, they're both from out of state. Uh, they will be attending the academy. They, <clears throat> it's conditional upon passing the background, which they've already passed the background. We've got that back. We're, uh, we're good on that. Thumbs up there. The next step for them is they have a polygraph, then they have a uh, fitness test, and then uh, they will start in with a uh, orientation day. Um, it's gonna be a busy weekend for them next weekend. <clears throat> um, obviously, you know, we've, we've talked about this, the extremely thin coverage. We've had to uh, make some adjustments with the schedule. Uh, we are now working uh, primarily from seven in the morning till two in the morning uh, it, with two in the morning till seven being on call. Uh, especially the next two weeks, we're really thin. We've just got, uh, two people working, uh, plus myself. So we're all adjusting, trying to take the on-call at night. Uh, we're working with uh, VSP. However, their coverage is gonna be very limited to us, what they can offer. Um, and there's a lot of conditions that come with that uh, uh, coverage. They did help us out with the uh, unfortunate fatal crash that we had uh, a couple weekends ago. Um, and, uh, you know, they sent quite a few people down to help help out with that. Um, and, you know, I also wanna thank uh, Tom Fadden and his, his, his crew from the uh, fire department because it was very cold and they stayed out there long hours as well as, well as the uh, rescue squad crew. They came out and uh, assisted on that as well. Um, I think that pretty much sums it up. We're still looking, anyone that's interested, if you know of anybody that's interested in uh, uh, applying, we'd love to sit down and chat with them, see what we can get. Great. We, we revamped the applications so they're online and they're a fillable form. So you can just go on, download the form and fill it out and submit it. Great. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. You're welcome. Anybody have any questions about police for Mike while we have him? He's got to stay on. I know, but we're, while we're on the topic. Yeah. Yeah, while we're on the topic. I just have kind of a random question, Mike, and I know I can only imagine how tough it is to be that short staffed and having to cover all those hours, but is there anything that we can do to kind of support morale while things are so thin or like do anything to, other than applying? <laughs> yeah, can you apply? Can I, can I put you on a uniform? <laughs> I know that, uh, you know, 
Uh, this morning, Scott was a little stressed because there were four crashes that came in within a half an hour um, with everything that was going on this morning. So it's just, it's one of those things where uh, um, there's not much we can do, just take it. And unfortunately people are gonna be, uh, uh, you know, there might be wait time, which we're gonna try and avoid. Obviously if there's uh, life threatening, that's gonna take priority. But, uh, you know, sometimes the crashes, we, we might not be able to get to them. Hmm. Anything, any other questions? Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so next up we have um, the Hardwick Electric Department report and Lynn Gedankins here. Hi, Lynn. Hi, I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, a few things that are going on with the electric department. Um, we've been planning for about a year and a half to put in an express circuit that will connect all of the substations. Um, and this is this is an important thing for the customers because it gives 100% redundancy to our state, to our system. So that if one substation goes out, it will be much faster to restore service. Uh, people may remember a number of years ago when we had a substation go out and the whole town was out for a number of hours. This should stop that from happening. Um, we should be able to restore typically within minutes rather than um, hours or days if it's a substation problem. Um, our We got our annual report for outage frequency and outage duration, and we were doing much better than the uh, state requirements. Um, we were 54% better on the um, interruption frequency and 29% better than target on, on customer average interruption duration. Um, so those are good things that we want to keep on doing. We were helped somewhat by the weather. Um, because outages are obviously pretty weather dependent. Um, the Center Road uh, solar project that some of you may have seen, it's, it's gonna be, the, I think the largest pro project uh, in town is 2.2 megawatts, is supposed to come online in March. Um, that's going to mean that Hardwick Electric will have to buy its proportional share on the state ratio, which comes out to about 1% because most of it's Green Mountain Power and uh, Vermont Electric Co-op. Um, but at the same time, and, and that's a good thing. So there'll be you know, more solar power out there for, for our, our customers and for the state. Um, at the same time though, we, we have an opportunity, two opportunities to increase revenue uh, one is, and this is going to take an analysis of what the projected revenues would be versus the regulatory cost of filing for a wheeling tariff. A wheeling tariff allows a utility to charge for transmitting power over their system to another system. And since that project is in HED service territory, um, as a technical matter, we could charge for wheeling. We'd have to file a tariff with the um, PUC, and that has costs uh, for doing that, so we'll have to balance, uh, but there may be something there. And VEPSA, uh, which HED is a member of, um, is a partner in the uh, Center Road project. And as a result, there'll be about $25,000 a year in revenue coming back to HED. So that's all a good thing. Um, ISO New England, which is the overarching uh, coordinator for all of New England. It's, it's the system operator. So they're the ones who keep the power flowing really and, and the lights on um, at the end of the day is developing a plan um, so that what happened in Texas last winter doesn't happen in New England, um, which is something that would have terrible consequences here given that our winters are usually much more severe than uh, Texas. Uh, and Mike Sullivan is actually on the development committee at uh, Vermont Electric Company, which is the transmission company for Vermont. Um, so we should have some good input on that. And Woolcott Hydro is up and running and uh, is producing, we're on track to produce about 10% of our power from Woolcott Hydro. And that's a great thing. It's one of the things that helps us keep rates down 
because um, we have maintenance costs, but that's it. We don't have any additional costs uh, for that power. And we should be getting about 10% of our power from that. So that's that's the report. Um, Great. I don't know. If and then the question, how is the website doing? The website is an ongoing source of um, disappointment. <laughs> and I use it, it's, it's um, the board was told that the website would be, a new website would be up and running. Um, it's not, uh, we have a board meeting on Monday and that is going to be a topic of conversation again. Um, so um, hopefully that will change and change soon. It had has to, the, the, the website is just completely inadequate. So good question. <laughs> Any other questions for Lynn while we have her? Kaylee took mine. <laughs> All right, uh, thank you. I will sign off then. Thanks so much, Lynn. <laughs> Sorry we're late. Okay. Good night. Good night. Um, where are we? We're on to item number one. Uh, Lindsay Osteen and Tim Nisbet to discuss potential locations for a new Hardwick rescue building. I saw Tim on there. Is Lindsay on this there is, too? It's a small print. Isn't it? it is really, we have an agenda with wicked small print. Can you guys read that? I can't. Anyway, Tim, you're on mute. Tim and we have Carl. Dean Stein. Oh, Carl Stein's here too. Okay, yeah. hi. I don't have yeah, Carl and I are here as EMTs from Hardwick Rescue. Lindsay couldn't make it. Okay. okay. So basically, we've outgrown our building maybe 10 years ago. Um, barely have enough room for our two trucks. Um, ambulance keeps getting bigger every time we buy one. Uh, we, so there's not room. There's no room to do maintenance. But the real issue is because we're having difficulty getting enough volunteers in town, in Hardwick area. A lot of folks are coming in from out of town. And we've also had to hire some folks, as you probably know, looking at our budget. So we really need to have an adequate place for people to stay. Uh, what we have is basically a couple cots upstairs in a meeting room um, and one really pretty crummy bathroom and an even crummier shower. So this is totally inadequate. So what we're proposing to do is to build a new building. And we're, this is our, basically we're just getting it off the ground. So what we need to do is find a location for this. We'd like to have it in the village of Hardwick. We'd like it to be visible uh, with obviously a, a safe entrance and enough room for our building and parking. Um, really like to have it on town water and sewer. And uh, that's about it. I've got a long list of things that we should have in this building. I've been in, we've been in contact with Stowe Rescue, with Morristown, and we see what they have. So here's some, a real brief figure. Our current building with the two floors is 2,100 square feet. Morristown's is 5,500 square feet. Stowe has 3,500 square feet, plus they share space with the PD and the fire department. So you can see that we're 50% of what these other guys have. Um, so what I would propose is that we find a piece of land that's at least a half acre and put up a building that's 4,500 to 5,500 square feet. And uh, that's what I've got. So looking around town, I know that the, the uh, town owns some property down by the dollar store. And I was thinking that'd be a pretty darn nice location, especially where that double wide was located just beyond the dollar store. I realized we'd have to put power, uh, we'd have to put uh, probably town sewer and water to it. But that's my idea, but there's plenty of other source places available, I believe. We're starting to find out more. So just want to introduce this idea to you guys and see what you think. Great. Um, thank you for bringing it to us uh, to discuss because uh, yeah, and that you're absolutely right that the town owns that property down behind Dollar General. I believe sewer, water and sewer, I think uh, only go as far as Dollar General right now. Water goes by it there. The water, oh, water goes by there. So we just have yep. to extend sewer. Yeah. Okay. 
So that's not too bad. Or no, but there was a double wide. Did they extend it to the double wide? No, water goes out to just the water. Two, the two houses. Okay. So when that, um, you don't have any interest in staying on Creamery Road then, because we're we're planning. You know, the the town highway garage is in a similarly uh, urgent need of replacement, um, and we're thinking about doing it there. Okay. I personally have no problem being there. Um, it's it's good for us now, but certainly not the building we're in. Right, we have the same issue right. with the highway garage because we have the same, like the trucks barely fit in there and yeah. the roof leaks and you know, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. But we would, so we, I don't know you, I don't know if the timing would work out for us driving our project and you, yours, but you know, if there were some efficiency of, of doing the two things together, I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. Well, certainly, let's uh, let's pursue it. Yeah. Do you, do you guys have a budget in mind for the project? I didn't hear that. No. Say it again, no. Tim. No, we do not have a budget. We haven't we haven't got to the design phase at all. I guess. Um, what do you suppose a commercial building would cost per square foot? A lot. Um, and then another question I have is the, your current operating budget, you pull from seven other towns, correct? Well, well, we serve seven towns and our, our budget is our, our, our revenues come from mostly from, uh, insurance, Medicare and Medicaid. And, uh, you know, they obviously don't cover all the expenses, but when it comes time for the town appropriations, we do a five-year weighted average of the number of calls for each town, right. and we divide that into the amount that we need to get from the total towns. I believe this year, I'd have to look it up, which I can do very quickly, but I think we divided $100,000 among seven towns. Yep, and that was your, that's like your operating budget minus your revenues. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. I can do okay. that out for you if you uh, want to ask some other questions to Carl. Well, I, I just want to check. I think we talked a little bit about this after the presentation during the um, that uh, about the appropriations, but I think it makes sense to have a meeting. Maybe it's just with um, the town manager and the EMTs, and then also maybe also with Tom as well, and figure out like what actually the capacity of our Creamery Road lot is in terms of all the people that need to be there in the buildings and maybe start the beginning process of that as well as identifying other possible locations for a 5,000 square foot building with 10 plus parking spaces or whatever the EMTs need. It seems like something that we could help with. Is there any benefit of having the EMT station near the town garage? Is there any synergy of having those two operations physically located near each other? The, the real benefit is that, uh, that we uh, get fuel from the town, from the town fuel pump. So that's right next door. Right. Other than that, I don't really see that there's any advantage one way or the other. You, Carl? No, I, I think that that's not, that's not a deciding factor um, for us. Obviously, if, um, if we can work together and build um, a building on that lot, <clears throat> I think the real problem there is gonna be uh, parking because um, for our crews, we only need f four or five parking spaces. But when we're doing our trainings and we're fully staffed, that's that that can run. You know, we we have thirty to thirty five employee. I mean, thirty eight employee, not employees, but members. And um, and if we're doing a mandatory training, we need parking for everybody. So that's one of the one of the considerations that we really have to look at. Um, I've been talking with the state and asking um, them to connect us with other um, other rescue services that have built a building in the last 10 years 
have floor plans um, to share with us and costs um, and input as to how their buildings are working. So that's that's been my main focus right now. Yeah. Orleans, Orleans Ambulance recently put up a building um, yeah. that, that would be a good source, I think, because I think that's probably a similar size building that you guys are looking at. Yes, and it's yeah. one of the ones we're, right yeah. now it's the only one that we know for sure um, is recent. Yeah. Um, the state, um, one of the state coordinators is contacting and, and um, supposed to get back to me with others. And then Tim and I are planning to make visits to each of those buildings. Is that correct? Not Tim? sure I understood which site is good for parking and which isn't. Are you saying the the site down down in, on South Main Street is better for parking, or that no. the Primary Road site is better for parking? Need well, go ahead, Tim. If, okay, I suspect there'd be plenty of room down on the. Um, the one down by the dollar store because there's, you know, there's unlimited room down there. We need, I'm thinking we need half an acre or so, but at the current town garage, we park near our building, but we also park across from the garage doors for the town, where the town crew parks. So there's plenty of room there right now. And however that the two buildings were coordinated or cited, it would be plenty either place. I don't think that's an issue. Uh, to answer the question that came up a little bit earlier about our budgeting, our total revenues we estimate are $348,000. 200 of that is from service income, 148 is from the towns. Great. So, and I most think... of us are volunteers, we don't get paid. Yep. Yeah. But we do have to have some some paid employees because there's just not, not enough volunteers to cover the shifts. Right. Some of that volunteer issue is related to um, COVID and the inability to do trainings um, around the state. The whole state is short because we've uh, we've only run a third of the number of trainings statewide that we normally run in a year. So I think this is a great, um, it's a great thing for us to, to all consider. Um, I think the, uh, the rescue squad is hugely important to our town and our larger community. Uh, um, and we wanna be supportive however we can. Um, I think it'd be great to explore whether it makes sense to um, coordinate the new town garage with the new rescue garage. I don't know, you know, how that, you know, we'd have, we have to look into it to know if it's good for right. everybody. Um, but we need to look into it on our, you know, we need to look into a town garage sooner rather than later too. So maybe it's a good time to, to do some planning around that. Well, if you'd like us to join with you in a task force to do that, we'd be willing to do that, no problem. I think yeah. that'd be great. I think that's what Kaylee was, push, was looking for. Yeah, I think it's definitely time that we have a task force for we've been talking about the town garage for a long time and and whether the EMTs are at, at Creamery Road or not, I think at least being a part of that original conversation I think makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Just to get that started. Yeah, great. So um, uh, I feel like we yes, we need to get that started. I'm trying to think about a way to, to put a stake in the ground and say, all right, we're gonna, this is how we're gonna follow up on that. I'm going on a little bit of a, a leave here coming up, but I would be interested in being a part of that task force in a month or two. Great. I would too. Great. Lovely. All right. So we'll form a task force, we'll get on it, but it sounds like it's gonna be I don't know, is that timing gonna be work with, with you guys, Tim and Carl, or if, if it's out a couple months? I don't expect this to be done by the end of the year. Yeah, you can start yeah. without, you can totally start without me, Eric. 
I'm just saying. Okay. okay. All right. We can start without you. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Eric, I think one of the issues is just for us is how fast we can raise the money. Yeah. That's um, for us too. Yeah. And so what comes to mind with me is that um, if, if you go to other towns and ask for financial assistance, and then you tell them that we're going to combine our town garage building with our rescue building, I would, I wonder how that would be received in other towns and how they would, um, how they would approach that. Or is that even part of the plan? Are, or, you, are, yeah. you, are you thinking of fundraising just generally yeah. to like individual donors? Or are you thinking of trying to partly fund the building through um, assessing through appropriations? No. Um, my, my vision is to do a capital campaign for this. And what we're asking from the towns is for our operational costs. I, I believe I speak for the squad with that. Yeah. Okay, so that would continue. So basically, continuing the same ask right. to the appropriation right. of the towns. Yeah. yeah, and this is above and beyond that. Yeah. A separate. So, so it sounds like the the for you, Carl and Tim, the EMTs need to figure out what exactly it is that you need and want, and then roughly the cost of it, and then we can help figure out where that might go, whether it's in combination with Creamery Road or at another location, but knowing, knowing what that rough budget's gonna be is gonna be really helpful. So one question I have, and uh, Tim, I don't know if you already asked this question, so stop me if I'm right, uh, <clears throat> if it has. Um, the, the, if the town owns the property, a piece of property that we're looking at, um, do we need, you know, what, what happens then? How does that get worked out? Well, we could, uh, I, I, do we, do you currently lease from the town or what's the current no, situation? No, Eric, that's a good question. I think we own the building, but I don't think we own the land that it sits on. But okay. uh, that's Another a good comment. question for <laughs> your listeners or somebody to find out. Uh, yeah. You know, that might be a rail, that might, because the railroad, that's. Could that be rail? I don't think it is there though. I think the rail stuff a, was more of the other end. They own a pretty large area there. But we bought a bunch of it. Right. I don't know, but we, we don't know. But we can't sell it. <laughs> so we could do, you know, I, you know, there could be a situation. I mean, they go back to Carl's question. I mean, there could be like a, you know, a dollar a year lease or something for right. some land or I don't know. Just throwing that out there. Okay. Um, just as a note uh, to check on also, um, when I was talking with Kristen about that property, she had told me that um, there was some sort of five-year waiting uh, period from when we acquired it because we acquired it through tax sale. Yeah, um, but we're... We're nearing the end of that, I think. We should be very close to that. We but, are. And, and there's a fair amount of wetland down there, just saying. So we can't pave a lot of it, just saying that. That was the that was the problem that Dollar General had as well. Yep. But we wanted to use it for industrial, to expand our industrial space. So there must be some way to do it. Yeah, I think that vision was up kind of up on the hill in the back mm -hmm. and uh yeah. the you know the part that tim was talking about was where that double wide sat right near the road right so but there's a, a land up and back too so all right so let's continue this conversation let's um are you can your office coordinate us on this sure all right town manager's office is going to coordinate us and help us move this forward. All right. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. See you. All right. See ya. Um, next is item two, select board to consider approving water and sewer connection applications for LB2 LLC for a car wash to be located at 75 Log Yard Drive. Anybody want to start a discussion on this? 
Can you remind me where Log Yard Drive is? Yes, Log Yard Drive is actually, uh, at least for part of it, is town road that looks for all the world like it's heading out through Lamoille Valley Ford's parking lot. And then it wends its way around to the log yard that's back there. Ah, so like the way to get back to the old Caledonia spirits. Correct. Yep. Okay. Is there any reason not to? I have a, I have a question. Um, there was a time, um, I don't remember how long ago it was, that someone wanted to do uh, some sort of dry cleaning um, facility down there in that similar area. Um, do we have issues with BOD or whatever, the water supply for something like a car wash? Has this gone through all of the other proper channels first? So the first stop. They've gone. No, no, no. They're, this is their last stop. They've acquired, I think, an Act 250 permit, um, state water and wastewater permits, commercial building permits. I mean, the building is... is and you said Sean wrote a letter? Yeah, the, the, way, the state wastewater permit has been approved and Sean okay. issued a capacity letter for that permit. So this is like the final. Now, the building's already up. Oh, okay. Okay. They, just need, they just need to tie. This is something that happened when Sean was um, in the office, and I, it all it all checks out with the state, and um, they just need this to tie in, which they're going to do shortly. Well, cool. and can our current water and can it hand on use? Yeah. Okay. Somebody want to? Then I move that we approve the permit. Thank you, Wiz. Do we have a second? Well, second it, but isn't it? It's we're approving the sewer connection yep. application, sewer, sewer and water connection application versus the permit. Yeah. yeah. Just okay. Correct. Yeah. You're right with that correction to your motion, Wiz. Absolutely. All right. Uh, any more discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, I got everybody except Kaylee. Did you? Aye. Okay, thank you. So that's everybody. Motion carries. Thank you. Next is item three Select Board to consider acceptance of a police officer appointment for Mike Henry, our interim police chief. And um, sorry, taking that. Oh, so. Signed it. We need the police appointment. Got it. Hang on. So this is, uh, I'm going to read it as short, but this- Would you like um, me to share it on the screen? I'm going to read it. Okay. Um, so it's a police officer appointment. We do this for, we have to appoint all police officers. Um, and it reads, some may, some may uh, make a note of this, maybe, maybe whiz. Didn't know all men that language already? Yes. Know all men by these presents that we, the undersigned select persons and town manager of town of Hardwick, Vermont, hereby appoint Michael Henry, interim police chief for said town under Title 24, Section 1931, VSA, with all the powers granted under this section and Title 24, Section 1935, VSA, and dated uh, tomorrow, Jan or sorry, that's... January, January 18th, 19, or 19, <laughs> 2022, um, and, and term is until further notice um, and dated today. I think we should change the men to people. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that in general, we need to go through, this needs to, a form that needs updating. Yeah, but, I, I, I thought we had already updated it. Because we, we did went, on one version, but I think this might have been an older template. Um, Alberta wasn't here. I didn't have her most recent. And yeah, I worked with Tanya. It's partly my fault. So I'll take responsibility for that. So um, didn't catch that. I would like to make the motion to appoint Michael Henry. Thank you. Second. <laughs> to the interim police chief. Is that what you said? Yes. OK. And we have a second from Liz. Great. Um, any discussion? Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, thank you. thank you. All in favor, please say aye. 
Okay. Aye. Aye. Okay, I got five eyes. So that's everybody. Thank you so much, Mike. We really appreciate your your stepping in and helping us in this capacity. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, moving along, next item, item number four. Somebody wants to discuss the ATV access to the town. <laughs> we talked about this once before. Um, it, got, it got tabled. No decision, it got tabled no and, it, and it was made. put onto this thing. And basically the, um, the change would be to allow ATVs to travel on South Main Street. Past the turn to Macville Road. Kind of from the turn north, to Macville Road north, north yep. to the, I guess that's the end of South Main the, Street where the, the light is, center, right? To the village center. To yep. the village center where the light is. That would be the idea. Any discussion? I just want to say thanks for putting the ordinance in. That's why we tabled it last time, was to make sure that we all saw the ordinance. I think yep. the group that we discussed last time, Wiz brought it up, was that this wasn't necessarily set in stone, that we could do this. And if it felt like, things needed to be changed, we could always look at the ordinance again. That was my understanding after the last discussion. This would be an addendum to the ordinance. So oh, wouldn't we update the ordinance? Yeah, it'd be just a- uh, An additional road listed yeah. in the roads. Yeah. And then Danny had also mentioned that VASA would be responsible for putting up signage and communicating with members what the travel lanes were and things like that. and. You had mentioned, David, having um, Calderwood Insurance be available for parking Mike, on weekends. Yep, um, Mike Gothier said that that would be an option. And the thing about the um, VASA hand, or the ATV club handling signs is in the um, ordinance, I think. Yep. So if this is something that people want to do, I think the way we would proceed would be to, to just generally agree that we want to move forward. And then next time we could have a ordinance that has the changes to approve. If I'd we don't. We, you know, go for it. If it doesn't work out, we can always change it. Anyone can we else? Can we just clarify that parking is going to be specified for ATVs and they're not going to be competing with cars in the auto parking spaces on Main Street? Is that correct? I don't know. So we're not going to be jockeying for even more parking problems? I, with think, I, I think that they would be considered an automobile um, mm -hmm. when they'd be down there. And is on the road so then they're going to be parking in the parallel spaces on main street as well they could potentially do it um on <laughs> south main street north uh, south of the intersection i was like going to say they can't go past the intersection right yeah like yeah. In so maybe of, in front of the school in front of the then, school and then after hours folks i mean i don't know this isn't i'm not saying that they have permission to do this but it, after hours People tend to park in the the O'Reilly Auto Parts place and access Positive Pi, and so Mike Gothier also said that they could park out um, behind his property, behind his building. Which usually that would be indicated on like a um, trail app, okay, directing the parking to. Um, that can be like a note, but that that's something Danny would have to clarify. So. Okay. And I thought we had talked about at our last meeting having so that that they would have the ability to go through the blinking light in order to turn around through the diner parking lot to get back to Macville. Is that still the understanding? Uh, I, I would say that we should probably do a, a hard line um, and not if we're going to do it, do it, have a very defined line where it end, the trail ends. Yeah. And, then, and when you open that up to being able to go into that parking lot, we're competing with spaces. And mm -hmm. also that kind of leaves it open to, well, if I can go this way back up Volca Street, then maybe I can go down Volca Street. So if we had, you know, 
the trail stops here and you got to turn around and you can access the downtown area on foot from the the light in the parking places by the school kind but then of thing. how are they but then how are they turning around without doing a u-turn well they're turning into parking and stuff so then they're they're gonna have to parking but if they're parking, like street. if like if you park at the elementary school in those parallel lots then would they be turning around at O'Reilly's or that's the only question is because there there isn't really an option to like get back to Macville without doing a u-turn if you're parking up by the church or the elementary school right yeah I don't know they... just, just a question <clears throat> yeah, we yeah. can ask we can ask Dan we can yeah how that would work how that works in other communities yeah we could clarify that with Dan yeah, I mean, maybe there's just like a like a note, as you were saying, like, this is a spur and these are the places where you can turn around or something. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. So is this something, I'm not hearing any like general opposition. So is this something we want to move forward with? We can try it. I think so. I think so. All right. So we, your office will work with- So I think the best way to do this is we'll sit down with Dan We'll update the ordinance. Get a proposed updated ordinance. Get a proposed updated ordi ordinance. Get a plan with VASA mm -hmm. to see if we can see how this would look moving forward. Yep, sounds good. Yeah. All right, there we go. Thank you. Next, uh, item five, select word to authorize the removal of John Jewett as an authorized signer on the town's TCM bank credit card account and add David Upson Jr. as an authorized signer and allow David to obtain credit card subject to town's credit policy, credit card policy. Seems like a formality that we need to address. I'd like to make the motion that we remove John Jewett from the current TCM bank credit card and add David Upson uh, to that account to obtain a credit card. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, that's everybody, all five ayes. Sorry, Casey. I didn't catch who the second was, I'm sorry. I did. Thank you. Uh, great, so there's that. Business taken care of. Uh, select board reports. Well, I could make a report that the banners are up. I imagine that everybody has seen them if you've been downtown. Thanks, Kaylee, for noticing. She was like the, my first text to say they look great. Um, that's the first set of 15 from the grant award from the Vermont Community Foundation NEK funds. There's a second set, and I have 15 different organizations that have signed up to be on that second set and we'll see how that works out. All the details haven't been sorted just yet on that one. And the downtown commission is busy doing their, uh, the process of uh, it, uh, hearing proposals from three different applicants for the consulting position to help us with the downtown designation application and such. Yeah. Wow. Good luck. It's busy. Yeah. And the townhouse is um, probably not going to open on March 1st, but I haven't really had any conversations with town manager about that anyway. We don't have, we don't have anything planned um, uh, at least in the month of March. So we may delay a little bit, but we'll, we'll get around to that. But if anybody wants to start making a plan to use the townhouse the the chamber players are planning to have a regular season this summer yay, yay. yeah and i think that the some of the school kids are going to maybe use it in june i hear from tess and Good. other than that we're we're open to other people being interested in using the building sherry may the historical society use it the evening of may 23rd I imagine so. I think I have it on my calendar already. Okay. <laughs> For the annual meeting of the Historical Society, which is a public meeting. Yes. And usually a nice presentation. Just yeah. saying. Yes. <laughs> about the about the year with no summer. 
1816. Oh. Wow. Oh, I know what I need to bring up. <laughs> I have, do you want to? No, go ahead. I'll okay, so I have, a, I have a select board report. Everybody brace yourselves. The Yellow Barn bid documents will be released tomorrow. Oh my goodness. I know, and bids will be due on March 21st. That's when we'll do bid opening. So at long last. Wow, it's I happening. It, it feels like it's happening. Congratulations, Eric. Thanks We're for hope, yes. hoping that the bids don't come back like our sewer project and like the library. Right. And the townhouse. Yeah. Um, you need to let go of that hope. <laughs> okay. You ready? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, so Chip Troiano reached out to me uh, over the last couple of days. Um, the charter changes have been getting to the floor of the, uh, the house. And um, we submitted what we needed to submit directly to Chip, which we... Um, we thought would have been done from the Secretary of State. So we, um, we had communications from the Secretary of State. Tanya took care of um, what needed to happen today. And we are right on track with the rest of the talents for the charter changes. Wow. We, um, Great. Yeah. Wanted to give that an awesome and give that update. Good deal. Thank you. Yep. Any, any other select board reports, new business or old business? I just have to tell you that- one old business. I just go ahead, to, Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I'm, the board knows about this, but my due date is March 9th. So I may or may not, I'm hoping to make it to our first meeting in town meeting. Um, but if not, I will be taking a couple of, at least a month off from the select board and then hopefully joining as soon as I can. Yay. All the best. March 9th. So that's a little earlier than you thought. Yeah. I'll, I'll update you, Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. Casey? Um, just wanted to quickly go back to the parcel in East Hardwick um, from the Montgomery's that he wanted to oh. donate. Um, <laughs> Still kind of sitting on that. Um, I met with Kaylee up there and we kind of looked at it and sort of, it is sort of landlocked. The really only access that we could get for it is off of the rail trail, which likely means we'd have to sign an annual lease with them and probably pay an annual fee. Um, so I feel like it was kind of left up in the air. And I know the comment was made is we had originally agreed to accept it as a donation, but Somebody said, well, can we change our minds on that? Um, we sort of need to make a decision because I should let Mr. Montgomery know what direction we're going. Um, so yeah, I just want to bring that up if-, if we Yeah, just... old business. <laughs> Casey, you and I looked at too that, that the, the amount of flat land that is on that property is basically in the V-Trans right of way anyway. Yeah, it's very, very small, like 20, 25 feet maybe off of that. And then it just goes right down over a bank kind of, so. Doesn't sound like there's anything there that the town can use, you know, that it's, it doesn't sound like an attractive yeah. piece of property. Yeah, I mean, my concern is um, it would almost be like an expense that we don't have now because in order to create any sort of legal access to it, we're likely going to have to sign some lease with the state of Vermont and they're going to charge us an annual fee for it. So. Uh, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't expect that we would have to pay a fee. What? Well, we do for like Creamery for Road video. and such. Like, so we, I would, yeah, I mean, I was thinking we would, but. For, well, for. No. Well, but it's going to be a public trail. Like, why would we? They're still maintaining their their rights. Yeah. To if there was ever a railroad to go back in through. Yeah. The so but the only thing that the town would have any interest in doing there, uh, right now, anyway, it, to my the best of my knowledge, is is some sort of rest stop for the trail. Yeah. 
but so just th there's already a rest stop um basically on the other side on the other side that you know is working on and that i believe they're working with vtrans on I mean, my thought is is that maybe it makes more sense to have the part like to recommend the parcel be donated to vtrans or to be purchased by a neighbor um but I don't know how it serves the town to have that piece of property. So maybe that's a message to go back to Mr. Montgomery with is that okay. we don't we don't see a a use a town use for this property and is that would are, you like a motion? <laughs> sure. I mean maybe we should rescind our acceptance. Because it was like last, you know, last summer when we said, "Yeah, we'll accept this donation of property." So we might want to maybe rescind that. Yeah, I move that we that we rescind the decision to accept, and and um, I can't come up with the adjective, but somehow decline the offer of this gift. Mm -hmm. That's a motion. Do we hear a second? I'll second it. Any more discussion? Um, uh, feedback. All in favor of uh, rescinding the, the acceptance of that parcel in East Hardwick, please say aye. 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 And Kaylee? Aye. Okay, so that's five eyes. So there we go. We actually don't want it for the town. All right. Thank you for bringing that back. Um, any other reports? New business, old business. Uh, and let's adjourn at seven thirty-five. Thank you all. <laughs>